Good morning. I want to start with a question. When's the last time all of you looked up at the sky, the moon, the stars, the Milky Way, and were inspired or even moved? For hundreds of thousands of years, humans like you all around the world knew and enjoyed and were inspired by scenes of the dark night sky like this. That's the Milky Way, our galactic home. Billions of stars strewn in a thin pancake across 100,000 light years. All civilizations observe the skies constantly. The starry night sky is central to our cultural heritage. Humans have associated the stars, planets, moon, and sun since the dawn of humanity with gods and spirits and have looked to them for answers to our, our most profound questions. Are we alone? Where do we come from? What will happen to us and everything else? Today is Friday. It's named after the Norse god Freya, associated with the planet Venus. That's why it's Viernes in Spanish or Vendredi in French, it's Venus Day. Uh, yesterday was Thursday or Thor Day or Jueves or Jeudi, Jovedi, Jupiter Day. Tomorrow will be Saturday, named for Saturn. So uh, it's October. Uh, the length of our months comes from how long it takes the moon to orbit around the Earth. The length of our year from how long it takes the Earth to go around the sun. So all of our timekeeping systems uh, come from watching the skies constantly. Closer to home and uh, closer to now, <coughs> runaway slaves on the Underground Railroad followed the drinking gourd, the Big Dipper, to freedom in the north including here in Springfield. Travelers everywhere planned their trips around when the full moon would be, because full moonlight usually provides more than enough light to see by. One of my favorite things to do is to go out walking in the snow on clear nights during full moon in the winter. It's a magical experience like no other. I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about. You practically need sunglasses at a time like this January moonlit night on the frozen Fitzgerald Lake in Northampton. The National Park Service, this is Chaco Canyon in New Mexico, considers dark skies a natural resource, like clean air and clean water, that all people have a right to. UNESCO from the United Nations says that the sky is our common and universal heritage and forms an integral part of the total environment that is perceived by humankind. There's a growing awareness these days of how shut off most people are from nature, how kids in our cities are even suffering from nature deficit disorder. The starry sky is part of that natural experience. Yet more than one half of all children growing up in the United States today have never even seen the Milky Way, have never had their breath taken away by the awesome sight of a meteor streaking across the sky. In fact, I'll bet most of you have, more of you have eaten a Milky Way than seen the Milky Way. <laughs> so why is this? It's because light pollution, light pollution has obliterated the view of the night sky. All across Massachusetts and America, cities look like this all night long, awash in the glow of streetlights. Here's a mostly clear sky over downtown Northampton in December with some of the brightest stars in the sky rising and you can barely see them. The Milky Way, forget it. And just think, all of that light in the sky is a complete waste. It was made to go down where it might be useful, but it went up by mistake instead, where it does nobody any good. It doesn't make anyone any safer, it doesn't help anyone see better. It's just wasted energy and money painting the dark sky light without even meaning to. Typical city lights are hundreds to thousands of times brighter than the full moon and are growing brighter every year. Here, a thousand Montrealers are gathered in Mount Royal Park, their beloved natural space, their central park, to try to watch a total lunar eclipse 
under the glare of streetlights that are hundreds of times brighter than the full moon. And those streetlights are casting half their lights upward into the sky. Cities produce so much light, it's now one of the dominant features of the land visible from space by astronauts in orbit around the Earth. Here's a light pollution map of the United States. Springfield is right there in that tongue of red between New York and Boston, some of the worst light pollution in North America. You can see that there are very few places in the country left that are black, meaning naturally dark, essentially pristine skies. Here in the Northeast, you have to try pretty hard and travel pretty far to get to truly dark, naturally dark skies. And one of the saddest parts of this story is that it's about to get much worse very quickly if we don't watch out. Cities are rushing to take advantage of an amazing new technology, cheap, efficient LED lights like this one, which give more light for less money and energy than the old lights. That's great. It's already saving cities money and cutting greenhouse gas emissions. The problem is that not all LED lights are the same. Most of the new LED lights that are being installed, unfortunately, are very blue, very bright, and they're poorly designed so that they shine not only down, but also sideways or even up, causing glare. That's the unwanted light that shines directly in your eyes. We all know what glare is. You know what it is from, from driving, when you see the sun shining in your eyes, or you see the headlights of an approaching car. It blinds you temporarily. That's why it's dangerous. It's obviously a problem for drivers and pedestrians and bicyclists. Some of the light from these street lights is, of course, going up into the sky uh, where it does nobody any good at all. It's a complete waste. In this view of Pleasant Street in Northampton, uh, you can see both strong glare, the light shining directly in your eyes, but also you can see that the street lights have different colors. You can see a blue one in, in the foreground and a yellowish one and a greenish one in the back. Why is color so important for light at night? Because the human eye is most sensitive to blue light at night. That's why moonlight looks blue. And when the eye detects strong blue light at night, it figures it must be daytime. And it suppresses production of melatonin, a very important hormone. That's why excessive light at night, especially blue light, is associated with disruption of sleep cycles. Blue light at night is also linked with other health problems, including increased rates of obesity, diabetes, and even cancer, according to research at Harvard Medical School and elsewhere. It's not just street lights, it's really any lights. It could be your computer or your cell phone. Uh, that's why there are great apps now uh, you can download for free to install on, your, on your, uh, your computer, your laptop, that reduce the blue light of your device, your screen, at night so that you can get a good sleep. But these street lights are on all night long, shining in people's bedroom windows, performing an unintended science experiment on a global scale. And blue light makes light pollution worse because blue light scatters much more in the air than yellow light or red light. That's why the sky is blue in the, in the daytime. So how did we get here? What's the point of all this bright, unshielded light in our cities? Uh, basically, it's a, it's a response to fear. It's a well-meaning uh, but misguided attempt to provide safety. There's a ba basic assumption that the dark night is dangerous. It's when bad things happen. If we can just turn night into day with artificial light, we can stop crime and make our cities safer. But in fact, decades of scientific research on crime and light at night, thousands of articles and peer-reviewed journals have failed to reach consensus. Some of the most dangerous cities in the United States, Newark, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Chicago, are lit up like a sports stadium. And some of the safest cities have taken control of light pollution and dimmed down the lights, like Flagstaff, Arizona. In this view of a parking lot in Northampton, as I was setting up my camera on the tripod, 
a man ran out of a local bar, unzipped his fly, and ducked into those bushes there under the street light to take a leak. So he was actually there when I took this picture. <laughs> now, more light does not lead to less crime. <laughs> All cars also have headlights, which provide the best illumination for drivers. And highways without lights have the same crash rates as, as highways with lights. So if the lights cause harsh glare, they can even be worse than having no lights at all. We don't need more lighting. We need better lighting. Even on your front porch, a bright light with strong glare like this one creates deep shadows where an intruder can hide. If you, can just, if you could just block that light somehow, then you'd see there's actually a guy standing there in the doorway. Well, he's in the other picture, too. You just can't see him because of the glare. This yard light should be in a can facing downwards. That's how all our outdoor lights should be designed. Outdoor lighting is also a huge, largely unrecognized quality of life issue. Harsh blue glare like this is ugly and prison-like and depressing. If you lived in this new development in Northampton, you'd have to get black shades for the windows to block out the light of these unshielded streetlights. When you go to see the live theater, do you see lights shining directly in your eyes from the stage? Of course not. The lights are carefully shielded, so they shine only on the stage, not on the audience. How many of you have naked light bulbs in your living room? I'm guessing most of you use lampshades or lights recessed in cans in the ceiling to cut the glare. Our city streets should be just as beautifully lit. We're talking about historic town centers and important architecture, not prison yards. Light pollution, especially excess blue light, is not just a problem for people. It also has a huge effect on wildlife. Millions of migrating birds die each year when they get confused by city light. Sea turtles that evolved to follow starlight to the sea when they hatch on the beach instead crawl towards city lights and die. Here you see thousands and thousands of fireflies on a warm June evening with the stars wheeling overhead. Like all animals, fireflies need real darkness at night. With increasing light pollution, entire species of fireflies face extinction. So how should outdoor lights be? Just take the time to design our city's new LED lighting more carefully. It's coming, like it or not. Springfield residents, pay special attention to the lighting of the coming casino. Make sure all outdoor lights are fully shielded against glare so the light goes down only, not out or up. We want these fully shielded lights on the right there, not the ones on the left. Make sure all the lights are warm colors, no bluer than 3000 K. That's the Kelvin temperature system we use to classify colors. When you go to the hardware store to buy a new light, it will show you the temperature in Kelvin right on the box. There you can see that 6500 K is much too blue, even 6,000 is too blue. 3,000 K is warm and mellow and easy on the eyes at night. The American Medical Association says outdoor lights should be no bluer than 3,000 K because of the dangerous health effects of blue light. Turn outdoor lights down or off when they're not needed, such as late at night when most people are at home in bed. Fortunately, LED lights are easily programmable to do that automatically. So are there any good lights out there? Fortunately, yes. These examples are from Smith College showing uh, uh, beautiful shielding, uh, beautiful colors, carefully designed lights. If our cities could just take the time to look at these examples, we would have much more beautiful cities than we have today. My dream is that instead of having to drive for hours to get to a dark site like the White Mountains in New Hampshire seen here, Everyone right here in Springfield can experience the awesome beauty and wonder 
of the stars and the Milky Way just by stepping out their own front door at night. Thank you all for helping make that happen.